Here's a conceptual question for you. It's all about that geometric design site distance. So for this one, we're told drag and drop each type of site distance with the correct definition. We have the decision site distance, the stopping site distance, intersection site distance, and the passing site distance. We want to take each one of these and drag them in the correct place with the correct definition. It's a drag and drop type question common nowadays on this exam. Try this on your own. Do this on your own and pause the video. Then you can check your work with mine. Go ahead, pause the video and do this on your own. So the way we'll answer this is actually refer to some notes I have for us. And these are notes in my Civil FE review course. So these notes are for students. They're there to help them with the concepts, help us understand the concepts, read over this before diving into problem solving. We read over these, look at images, look at definitions, engage the active learning, reword some terms, make flashcards, and all of that. So these are the notes I provide for my students. We do cover them also in lectures. So we're going to use these notes to actually answer this question and to look at these key definitions. So we know we're looking at site distance and this is broken down. We're going to look at four major types of site distance. The first big one is the stopping site distance. So this right there is simply the distance traveled in the time it takes for a driver to recognize an object ahead then they decide to stop and then stop their vehicle notice there's that recognize part recognize meaning we have reaction we see something and we have that perception reaction time then we decide to stop then we decide to stop the vehicle that's the total stop in sight distance so we know the stop in sight distance ssd consists of two components the brake reaction distance that's the perception reaction time and also the braking distance so after we hit that brake we're going to have a braking distance so those two added up will give us the total stop in sight distance and this right there is the equation provided in the handbook the stop in sight distance and this would be the reaction the brake reaction distance would be this component and this component would be the braking distance you can know that the brake reaction distance is this because it has the time it has the velocity and it has the time and that time is the driver reaction time so that right there is the stop in sight distance and based on that we can go back in the question and say the stop in sight distance ssd is which one it's going to be traveled the distance traveled in time it takes for the driver to recognize an object ahead decide to stop then stop their vehicle that's the SSD. So we will put that here on exam day. We will drag and drop that. Let's continue. Let's continue and define the next one. The next one that we will look at is the intersection site distance. So this one's a little tricky, but to keep it simple, it's related mainly to the departure site triangles. These are a little tricky to actually conceptualize, but departure site triangles are for the departing vehicle this vehicle right there is stopped it's stopped and when you stop that vehicle we're going to have a triangle a sight triangle we need to clear up because we need to see this vehicle and this vehicle so this right there is the sight triangle it's a departure sight triangle where we see this vehicle so all this area has to be cleared up and in turn that relates to the intersection sight distance that isd so that distance is important and that's going to be essentially the horizontal distance of this 90 degree triangle with respect to that departure site triangle so we know with respect to this vehicle again imagine you're stopping there let's say you want to make a right turn or maybe you want to make a left turn so let's say you're trying to make a left turn you're going to stop you need this cleared up we call this a departure site triangle and that in turn relates to the intersection site distance and notice the dimensions here that intersection site distance is going to be important it's the total distance to the midpoint of the vehicle and it's also with respect to the center line of the travel lane so this car is going this way and the center line of the lane would be like this and this car here would travel to the right and the center of the roadway would be like that so it's the midpoint or the center of the traveled lane where we make that departure site triangle the most important part is going to be this this is the intersection site distance so this ultimately relates to an equation 
This equation is in the handbook. Make sure you know where this is. So the ISD is 1.47. Notice again that 1.47 is also used in the SSD definition. We take V major. So V major is defined in the handbook as the major V. V is like velocity, but it's going to be the speed. The speed in miles per hour. The design speed of the major road. So the major road we know is going to be this road. This is the major road. So the departing vehicle is looking at that major road but it's always with respect to the major road and we take t sub g that t sub g is a little confusing but it's going to be the time gap the keyword time gap if you see anything with time gap it's going to be related to the intersection site distance so it's the time gap for vehicle entering the roadway in seconds so a vehicle entering the roadway is this vehicle that vehicle will have a time gap and that time gap we can get from tables and this is from the Ashto manual. So let's say we have a passenger car as our car that stopped. And this car wants to make a right turn. We just use 7 seconds for the minimum gap acceptance time. That time gap we just use 7 seconds. So this would be provided to you if they want you to like to extract values from a table. But a lot of the time they give it to you in the problem statement. Maybe they'll tell us, okay, find the intersection site distance. Then maybe find the site triangle. Maybe do some trig. Maybe things like that. They could play around with that, but it's related to the departure site triangle. Ultimately, that very important intersection site distance. And that's really what we're finding when we use that equation. And here we know the time gap to put simply. We know we have that stop driver. This driver is gonna, this time is gonna be for the driver to accept, to accelerate and complete a turning maneuver. So the stop driver is gonna either go right, go left, and they're gonna accelerate and make that maneuver. That's the time gap, the total time it takes. So that's gonna be the time gap and it, de it depends on whether it's a right, left, or a crossing maneuver. And again, Astro recommends some values, it's shown here. And the star shows we add 0.5 seconds if we have older drivers. So for right turn, for regular drivers, it's seven. For if we have an older population, we would use 7.5, let's say for that time gap. So it's as simple as then we put that in there and we find the intersection site distance. And then that relates, let's say, go back to our question, which one would you pick there? So here you don't really have to know much about the ISD, but it is time gap. It says time gap acceptance distance needed for a driver to enter an intersection. That's the ISD. That's one definition, one way we can put that. So that's the correct one, ISD. So we're almost done. So we took care of ISD. We took care of stop and sight distance. Let's go to the next one. Next one is going to be the decision sight distance. That one's a little messy and we don't deal with this often, but it's just good to know. The big one is intersection, stop and sight, passing distance is also maybe this is one that's actually going to be on the safe side. So we know usually the stop in sight distance is enough. That's enough and we use that to determine that minimum length of curve. But sometimes when we have let's say examples where the driver is going to is going to likely make an error when they let's say perceive something in decision making control actions and these include examples let's say at the interchange intersections major changes in cross sections such as toll plazas drop lanes areas where we have concentrated demands where we have a lot of source of competing information you're a driver you see an ad here you see a pole here so there's just too much stimulation going on that's when likely that inter decision site distance is going to come into play so we know we use this as the distance required for a driver to detect an unexpected or otherwise difficult to perceive information source. So we want to recognize the source, select an appropriate speed and path, and initiate and complete the required maneuver safely and efficiently. And this DSD, the decision site distance, will be greater than the stop in sight distance because we're adding that additional component Remember with the stop in sight distance, it's perception reaction. So we see something, then we stop. So we have that stop in distance. Now with this, we have to have perception reaction, stopping, and also allowing the driver some time to maneuver. 
So we add that on top of it. So it would be always greater than the stop in sight distance. That right there is the decision sight distance. And what we would do with this one is pick which one. So distance traveled in time takes the driver to recognize an object, decide whether to stop their vehicle or change their path, then make the maneuver. So we're allowing the driver to also change their path and make the maneuver and not simply stop compared to, let's say, the stop in sight distance. So that's going to be the decision sight distance. That's that one. And the last one is going to be the passing sight distance. So this one, I tried to make it not so obvious, but if you see the word passing, it's the passing sight distance. So this one, it says sight distance applicable only in the design of two lane roadways, including two way frontage roads. It makes sense. So we'll see that in a bit. So this is the passing sight distance. And that right there, if we go in the notes that we have in the course, we know we can go down and actually look at the passing sight distance here. So this relates to the length of the roadway that a driver of the passing vehicle must be able to see initially in order to make a safe passing maneuver. So this is on two lane roadways passing sight distance contributes to the determination of no passing zones. So we know H2 breaks this down into three main components. It's the distance during, so distance traveled during perception reaction time and acceleration into the opposing lane, the distance required to pass the opposing lane and the distance necessary, necessary to clear the slower vehicle. So this vehicle, imagine it, it's trying to pass the vehicle in front of it. So we need to ensure we have enough passing sight distance with these major three components considered. That's really it. And we do that on the two way roads. And that is that that's the passing sight distance. So in this case, we answered all of them. And now we know all about that sight distance. Keep going at it. Keep chugging through these practice problems. And thank you for your practice.